More than 70% of children have malocclusion. You need to know about these facts. Welcome, everyone, to another video on this channel. I'm speaking to you from Brazil, bringing you the most scientific orthodontics possible, because today I'm going to present scientific evidence about the number of children who are without treatment. This video will help you by providing real data without marketing, without the commercial spin from companies, without unreliable information, so that you have trustworthy facts. And afterwards, I will make available one of the most important articles on the subject. So, if you are a doctor who doesn't like to be misled by commercial brands, but wants to know what science really says, welcome and watch this video until the end. I don't know if you are someone who already watches a lot of videos on this channel. If you're already used to it, you know the professor always asks you to leave a like and subscribe to the channel because that helps us grow and this is a channel that truly has a lot of valuable content. It already helps many doctors in the area of interceptive orthodontics as well as corrective orthodontics. Why is it important to know how many children have malocclusion both worldwide and in Latin America? Number one, because you need to know, in a community out of every 10 people, how many have malocclusion and even which types of malocclusion are most prevalent. Number two, it's also necessary for you to start studying an area of the market that will bring you a return. For example, you might study cavities, if it's something that's on the decline. There are many pediatric dentists who study this and everything else, and that's not a problem. But there are people who want to focus their studies on an area with potential, an area where you'll have patience and get a financial return on the investment you're making in those studies. So I think that's also an important area to evaluate before deciding, am I going to study interceptive orthodontics or am I going to study, I don't know, another area. First of all, I bring you data from the World Health Organization, which shows that the prevalence of malocclusions is between 66 and 85%. So imagine that in a group of 10 children, between six and nine of them will present some type of malocclusion according to the World Health Organization. And here we observe three very common types of malocclusions. The first malocclusion is posterior crossbite. We also have crowding and class 2 as very common, which are the malocclusions most frequently found in relation to what affects children. And we have other articles, such as this article by Perez in 2022, which shows that malocclusions affect up to 85% of Latin American children. This is already a study conducted on the prevalence of children here in Latin America. So, the rate of malocclusion increases even further to 85%. We also have other types of evidence. Solk and collaborators here in 2009 discuss why we should be concerned about these malocclusions in children. Because this ends up impacting not only aesthetics, how they see themselves, and bullying, which we already know is very important, but it also starts to affect the child's breathing. So, there are malocclusions, for example, like posterior crossbite, where from the moment the patient develops a posterior crossbite, we have poor tongue positioning and the patient will breathe poorly because the tongue is not in its proper position. So, we already start to see the patient's breathing and sleep being affected. If the patient doesn't breathe properly, when sleeping they begin to have some breathing pauses and don't reach the proper depth of REM sleep. So, this is one of the impacts that occur in a patient with malocclusion. What other impacts can we already assess if this malocclusion is not treated? Have you ever heard that cervical posture, a child's posture, can be affected if that child has a malocclusion? 
Has the U.S. also heard about that? And we also have evidence in the literature showing that there are certain types of malocclusions, such as class two and hyperdivergent patients, or patients with long faces accompanied by open bite, the mouth breather syndrome. All of these are characteristics that cause the patient to lower their mouth more to breathe because they can't breathe well through their nose. This ends up making the palate even higher. So we see characteristics like teeth that can break more easily, lips that are drier, and the patient ends up lowering their head to be able to breathe through their mouth. And this passive cervical position ends up impacting the child's entire growth. The child's development as we improve this malocclusion, perform a proper rapid maxillary expansion, and provide the correct treatment for the patient's specific problem, we can already observe an improvement in this cervical posture. You can see just how impactful it is when we work on, resolve, and treat these malocclusions. Here I have more evidence for those who like to study, showing that untreated crossbites increase the risk of asymmetries by 75%. So imagine that when I have a posterior crossbite, I have an alteration in the box lid system. So the lid, which is usually the maxilla, is altered and this maxilla does not fit into the box. So I have a symmetry to one of the sides. We call this a functional posterior crossbite, meaning that when I position the patient in centric relation, they return to their original, generally symmetrical, crossbite position. But since this position is not very comfortable, they end up shifting to one of the sides. But what does that have to do with asymmetry? Dental asymmetry and, as a consequence, facial asymmetry. Because anything we keep in a certain position for a long time ends up causing an adaptation. If we don't treat this posterior crossbite early, we will end up having problems maintaining this symmetry for much longer. And now, to wrap up this video, now that you're here, now that you've seen there's a high prevalence, that there are many patients who need treatment. I usually say it's an epidemic. There are children who need treatment, and yet there are still professionals who say there aren't any patients that parents don't want to treat their children. But sometimes what's missing is to study a bit more, to get a bit more training in order to start seeing malocclusion in more detail with more information and to explain to parents the importance of treatment. So to finish, I want to leave you with a guide on what to do when you notice that a patient has a malocclusion. What are you going to do from now on? What are you going to do when you evaluate? When you notice that a patient has a malocclusion? So the very first thing is to apply an anamnesis guide because from the anamnesis, we will be able to understand what this patient's world is like. Whether they've had any trauma, whether they used a pacifier or not, or if they haven't had any habits, if they've had respiratory problems, if they've had any surgeries. What is their behavior like to determine whether we go with a fixed appliance or a removable appliance? So, which data are the most important? They should be included in the orthodontic anamnesis form. So, consider a very comprehensive orthodontic anamnesis form that covers everything from behavioral aspects to facial, occlusal, and cephalometric aspects, so you can evaluate the patient as a whole. After you've completed step one, which is to consider an anamnesis form, you will photograph the patient. So, you will take the extra oral photographs, which are three in total. You'll need a frontal photograph a lateral one, and the right or left is sufficient, and a frontal photograph of the smile. These three photos are enough for you to produce a good facial diagnosis of the patient. Next, you'll take five intraoral photos, which are the frontal photo, right lateral, and left lateral, upper occlusal, and lower occlusal. And with these five photos, okay, we're all set when it comes to diagnostic photos. And finally, we will request the complementary exams, which would be the models. 
You can make the plaster models yourself or request a scan, order a scan, a panoramic x-ray, a lateral cephalometric x-ray, and the cephalometric analysis. You can do the cephalometric analysis yourself, either virtually or manually, or you can ask the radiology center to do it. That's also an option. So, with all this information, you are now ready to consider making a diagnosis for an orthodontic patient. Now you can put into practice everything you've learned here in the video. If there is any patient you have diagnosed using only a panoramic x-ray, that's not correct. Request the complete documentation and your diagnosis will also be more thorough, as will your treatment plan. If you have realized the importance of treating child patients and that this is a great opportunity for your professional life, not only to help these patients with science, safety, and good treatment, but also to open up a new area in your profession. Let me tell you that I am the coordinator of the Intercept course, which is a course in preventive and interceptive orthodontics that is conducted online. It has already graduated thousands of doctors in Latin America as well as in Europe and around the world because we also offer this course in English. I consider it the most comprehensive program possible as it covers everything from basic to advanced levels, from diagnostic knowledge for general dentists to highly detailed treatment plans for those who are already specialists in orthodontics or pediatric dentistry. If you would like to receive information about the next group when it becomes available, because right now enrollment is not open, go ahead and register your name on the waiting list. I will leave the link to the waiting list here and also in the video description so you can receive information in advance with special privileges and gifts when we open the next group. I hope you enjoyed this video. Take this opportunity to leave a comment below with any questions you have about this issue of prevalence. If you also notice this prevalence of so many children like this in your country, if you already requested all these tests, or if this was new to you, or if you have any other questions, leave them in the comments. I hope you enjoyed it a lot. Bye bye. See you in the next video.